The worship of deities in the month of Kartika yields all worldly pleasures, dispels all ailments, and removes the adverse effect of spirits and evil planets. Worship of the sun on Sundays in the month of Kartika, together with the gifts of sesame seeds and cotton, alleviates leprosy, etc. By making gifts of haritaki, one of the myrobalans, chilies, cloth, milk, etc., and by installing brahman, the alleviation of consumption is brought about. By making gifts of lamps and mustard seeds, epileptic fits are alleviated. The worship of Shiva on Mondays in the month of Kartika suppresses excessive poverty and increases prosperity. The worship of Skanda on Tuesdays in the month of Kartika and making gifts of houses, fields, domestic articles and utensils, lamps, bells, etc., the devotee gains eloquence without delay. The worship of Vishnu on Wednesdays in the month of Kartika together with the gift of cooked rice with curds, yields good progeny. The worship of Brahman on Thursdays in the month of Kartika and the gift of honey, gold, and ghee affords the increase of worldly pleasures. The worship of the elephant-faced Ganesh with gifts of scented flowers affords the enjoyment of worldly pleasures. Even a barren woman gets a good son, making gifts of gold, silver, etc. The worship of the guardians of the quarters, the elephants of the quarters, the serpents, the guardians of dams, the three-eyed Rudra and Vishnu, the remover of sins, bestows perfect knowledge. The worship of Brahman, Danvantari, and of the twin deities, the Ashvins, alleviates ailments, prevents foul death, and suppresses all sickness instantaneously. Gifts of salt, iron, oil, pulses, trikatuka, fruits, scents, drinking water, liquids in prashta measures, and solids in pala weights enable the devotee to attain heaven. The worship of Shiva and others early in the morning in the month of Danus enables the devotees to achieve everything gradually. The offering of eatables shall preferably be ghee-soaked rice of the shali variety and well-cooked. The offering of various kinds of cooked rice is specially recommended in the month of Danus. The person who gives cooked rice in the month of Margashirsha shall attain all desired benefits. The giver of cooked food in the month of Margashirsha shall attain destruction of sins, achievement of the desired objects, good health, virtue, good comprehension of the Vedic passages, good practices, great enjoyment here and hereafter, permanent unification with the Godhead, and realization of the perfect knowledge of the Vedanta. A person who desires enjoyment of worldly pleasures shall worship the deities early in the morning throughout the month of Margashirsha, or at least for three days. No one shall be without sacred rites in the month of Danus. Rites in the month of Danus prescribed for the morning can be performed up to Sangava time, three muhurtas from sunrise. A brahmana shall observe fast in the month of Danos and restrain all his senses. Till midday he shall repeat the Gayatri mantra. Till the time of going to bed he shall repeat the mantras such as Pankshakshara. After acquiring perfect knowledge he shall attain salvation after death. Other men and women shall repeat the Panchakshara mantra alone throughout and take three baths every day. They will attain perfect knowledge. They shall secure the annihilation of the great sins by repeating their favorite mantras. 
The great offering of eatables shall be made to Shiva, especially in the month of Danus. The constituent parts of the great offering are as follows. Rice of the Shali variety, a bhara by weight, pepper measuring a prashta, countable articles 12 in number, honey and ghee, a kudava each, a drona measure of green gram, 12 varieties of side dishes, cake fried in ghee, sweets made of shalika rice, curd and milk, 12 prashtas each, 12 coconuts, 12 betel nuts, 36 clove leaves, camphor powder, five saugandika flowers, and betel leaves. This great offering of eatables made to the deities shall be distributed among devotees in the order of their castes. A devotee who makes the offering of cooked rice becomes the lord of a kingdom in the world. But by making the gift of the great offering of eatables, a man attains heaven. O oh, excellent brahmanas, by offering this a thousand times, the devotee attains satyaloka and lives the full span of life therein. By offering this twenty thousand times, he attains a still higher world and is not born again. Twenty-six thousand great offerings constitute lifetime offering. Making gift of this is called the great accomplishment. A devotee who makes this is not born again. The lifetime offering shall be made in the month of Kartika on an auspicious day. It shall be done at the time of the transit of the sun, on birthdays based on nakshatra, on full moon days, annual birthdays, etc. In other months, this can be performed when auspicious planets conjoin the natal nakshatra. Even if the conjunction is only partial, the offering shall be made. One gets the benefit of dedicating oneself by that. Shiva is delighted by the dedication of self and bestows sayuja mukti, the salvation of complete identity with him. This lifetime offering shall be made only to Shiva. Shiva exemplifies birth inasmuch as he has the form of both yoni, vaginal passage, and linga, penis. Hence, in order to ward off births, the Janma Puja is of Shiva alone. The entire universe consisting of the movable and the immovable is of the nature of Bindu, dot, and Nada, sound. Bindu is Shakti, power and Shiva is Nada. Hence, the universe is pervaded by Shiva and Shakti. Bindu is the support of Nada. The universe has the support of Bindu. Both Bindu and Nada together support the entire universe. The unification of the Bindu and Nada is called Sakali Karana, and the universe takes its birth as a result of this Sakali Karana. The phallic emblem is the fusion of Bindu and Nada and is the cause of the universe. Bindu is the goddess and Shiva is the Nada, and the fusion of the two is the phallic emblem of Shiva Lingam. Hence, to ward off future births, the devotee shall worship the Shiva Lingam. Goddess of the form of Bindu is the mother, and Shiva of the form of Nada is the father. Great bliss is the result of the worship of the parents. The devotee shall worship the Shiva Linga for acquisition of the great bliss. That goddess is the mother of the universe, and that Shiva is the father of the universe. Sympathy towards the son who renders service naturally increases in the minds of the parents. O foremost among sages, Ordinary parents bestow hidden treasures to the son who renders special service. Hence, a devotee shall worship the phallic emblem in the manner of mother and father for the acquisition of the hidden great bliss. Bharga is Purusha, cosmic man or being. And Bharga is Prakriti, cosmic nature. Purusha is of hidden latent conception and Prakriti is of manifest inner conception. Since it is the father who conceives first, 
The Purusha has the primordial conception. The unification of Purusha and Prakriti is the first birth. Its manifestation in the Prakriti is called the second birth. The creature, dead even as it is born, takes up its birth from the Purusha. Certainly, the birth is induced by Maya as an extraneous source. The word Jiva, the individual soul, means that which gets decayed even from the time of birth. Another meaning of the word Jiva is that which is born and meshed and entwined. Hence, the devotee shall worship the Shiva Lingam, the primordial phallic image, for unraveling the knots and nooses of birth. The word bhaga means the primordial nature because it increases and flourishes. The shabda matra, the cosmic sound principle, all objects of enjoyment, evolve out of prakriti, being enjoyed by the sense organs. The word bhoga comes to mean that which gives bhaga. The principal bhaga is, of course, the prakriti, and bhagavan is Lord Shiva himself. The Lord alone is the bestower of enjoyment, boga, and not anyone else. The Lord, who is the master of bhaga, is called barga by wise men. In the Shiva Lingam, the phallus is united with the vagina, and vagina is united with phallus. For the sake of perpetual enjoyment here and hereafter, the devotee shall worship the phallic emblem, which is Lord Shiva himself. He is the sun giving birth and sustenance to the worlds. His symbol is justified in the coming into existence of things. All persons should worship Shiva, the cause of birth, in his phallic form. That which makes the Purusha known is called Linga, the symbol. The unification and fusion of the symbols of Shiva and Shakti is thus called Shiva Lingam. The Lord, delighted at the worship of his symbol, wards off the function of the symbol, that function being birth, etc. Birth ceases. Hence, the devotee shall worship the Shiva Lingam with the sixteen forms of service and homage to acquire the benefit from Prakriti and Purusha through means inherent or extraneous. The worship thus performed on Sundays wards off birth. The devotee shall worship the great phallic emblem on Sundays with the syllable Aum. The ceremonial ablution of the phallic emblem with Panchagavya on Sundays is specially recommended. Panchagavya is a compound of cow's urine, dung, milk, curd, and ghee. Milk, curd, and ghee can severally be used with honey and molasses. The offering of rice cooked in cow's milk must be made with the syllable Aum. The syllable Aum is Dvani Linga, sound. The Svayambhu, self-manifested Linga, is Nada Linga. The Yantra, diagrammatic symbol, is Bindu Linga. The letter A is a lingam of huge form, Guru Vigraha. The letter U is the mobile, Chara Lingam. And the letter N is the fixed, installed, Pratishtita Lingam. A person who worshiped the lingas perpetually undoubtedly becomes a liberated soul. Devout worship of Shiva liberates man from the bondage of births. A fourth of the benefit is achieved by wearing Rudraksha beads sacred to Shiva, and a moiety, half, is achieved by smearing basma, holy ashes, over the forehead. Three-fourths can be achieved by the recital of mantras, and a man becomes a full-fledged devotee by means of worship. A man who worships both the phallic emblem of Shiva and the devotees of Shiva attains salvation. O Brahmanas, stable devotion can be found firmly established and flourishing only in that person who reads this chapter or listens to it attentively. <laughs>